Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well today. Uh, as we continue today in our word from the word, uh, and today our word is arrogance. Arrogance. And uh, I know some of these are encouraging words for you. Some of them are really designed. I believe God is just kind of showing us all that there's some things we also just need to be careful of. Uh, as we talked about last week, a lot of different things with Ezekiel. Uh, just to catch you up to speed, uh, we're going to be in Ezekiel chapter 4 today. But we, we know beginning in Ezekiel, he has this, this great vision of the Lord's chariot and all that went along with that. Uh, then he ends up eating the scroll, showing that knowing God's word, ingesting God's word into our lives, how important that is. God tells him he's going to make him a watchman, uh, that he is one that's to warn both the righteous and the unrighteous. And that also uh, that he was going to speak only when God told him to speak. And, and there was a lot there that we can take from that. Uh, if you haven't got a chance to check out those videos, just go back there on our YouTube page on our channel and check out those videos from last week. But today, Ezekiel chapter four and the word is uh, arrogance. I want to read the first three verses for you. And it begins with this as you also son of man. Take a clay tablet and lay it before you and portray on it a city, Jerusalem. And of course, this is God speaking uh, to Ezekiel. Lay siege against it. Build a siege wall against it and heap up a mound against it. Set camps against it also and place battering rams against it all around. Moreover, take for yourself an iron plate and set it as an iron wall between you and the city. Set your face against it, and it shall uh, be besieged, and you shall lay siege against it. This will be a sign to the house of Israel. Now, here's the thing. As you look at that, you think, well, man, that, I don't see arrogance in there. But I, I pray that you're, you're looking at these whole chapters, and I pray that today you'd read this whole chapter on your own. Uh, we don't have time to do it here. But what I want you to understand is that what was going on is that God is giving this prophecy to Ezekiel. Uh, he is basically telling him to warn the people of the judgment that's coming. Uh, he is to warn them. He already told them they're not going to listen. But this is what I want you to do. I, he, God is a, a faithful God, but God is also a very patient God. Uh, here in this chapter, he even tells Isaiah, um, I'm sorry, he tells Ezekiel that as he's lying there, after he's kind of uh, almost what we get kind of playing toy, so toy soldier or playing with uh, playing in the dirt and building a little fort and he's making this design and and everything where everybody would know that this was the city this was jerusalem remember they're exiled uh in babylon and, and they would know exactly what he was doing and exactly the place that he was he was um displaying there so as they watch this and they see jerusalem and he sets up this iron plate between himself and the city it was it was showing that it was god's hand against the city and he tells Ezekiel later on in the chapter that he's to lie on his side, uh, on one side for 390 days uh, and on his other side for 40 days. This was to represent the 390 and 40 years, right? 430 years altogether. Each day represented a year of sin. And so God is a patient God. But here's the thing. He was telling him that, Yes, Jerusalem was going to be destroyed, uh, that all the promised land was going to be basically just taken advantage of and, and, and taken by all different uh, people, that all this was going to happen to this land that was promised to them. And see, in God's patience over the 430 years, and, and a lot of commentators argue about the what time frame he's talking about, uh, but that's not the point for today. The, the point is, is that they had become so arrogant that they thought that their sin almost had no cost. They had gotten to the point where they thought, well, we've gotten away with this this long. God's not going to do anything about it. And see, there were even false preachers at the time that were proclaiming that God would not allow Jerusalem to fall. That God would not allow all these things to be destroyed. That he wasn't going to allow any of these things to happen. But but here's the thing. I read in many commentators. Think about it this way. Why would God take 
uh, all the time and energy to save something that the Israelites had continued to defile. They defiled the temple. They defiled the land. They defiled themselves over and over and over again. They made compromises. I almost kind of made our word for today compromise, but maybe on for another day. But to think about, they had gotten so arrogant in the way that they were living and, and justified everything that they were doing that they thought basically that, hey, man, we're God's people. He's not going to allow anything to happen to us. And now that they're exiled, they're almost looking back. Well, well, look, we're here, but there's no way that anything's going to happen to Jerusalem. You know, we're going to have a home to go back to. But as Ezekiel is, is laying out this this. He can't speak at the time, but he's he's lying out and, and putting on this kind of show, these action sermons for everyone to see for a couple hours a day. And as people would have gotten word of it and, and come to see it, they would have been very confused. Now, they would have known right away that he's talking about the, the siege was coming on Jerusalem. And and even at that time, knowing that the the enemy, they're in Babylon, right? They, they would have known that a lot of these things were were quite possible. And here's the sad truth of it. The sad truth is, is that God had basically, for lack of a better way of explaining it, he had gotten fed up. <laughs> I told you he was patient. And, and, you know, for us to say that God was fed up, we think, well, no, that, that can't happen. But let's think about it. Uh, you and I, we would become um, outra outraged and upset after a very short period of time. But if he apparently had, had allowed this to go on for 430 years, before he took action. Uh, so that that describes to me a extremely long suffering and patient God. But in that patience, the sinful people grew arrogance. The false prophets proclaimed arrogance. They they kind of sold it that there's nothing that can happen to us. But here's the other part is that as Warren Wearsby, y'all know I love him, he had, he had pointed out that God had gotten so fed up with what they were doing and the way that they were living that it, it pleased God more to see Jerusalem destroyed, the temple, everything there, the promised land. It, it pleased him more to see all of that destroyed and even for the people uh, to be destroyed. It pleased him more to see that than it did to see them continue to continue to be pathetic witnesses for him. That they were the testimony of God to these Gentile nations, right? He got tired of saying, well, that's what you're going to show the world. That's how you're going to show the world that God's people act. He says, no, I've been patient long enough. And, and now is the time for you to not be arrogant anymore. Because I promise you today, for those of you watching and listening to this today, don't be so arrogant in your sin to think that, well, I'm a Christian and nothing's going to happen. Let's, let's remember that he is God. And just like these Israelites needed to repent of their ways, repent of their sin, turn from their sin and, and look to God, you and I today, we need to be careful that we don't have that arrogance about us. That we just, we, I mean, so often we'll say, well, we're covered under the blood and, oh, I can just ask forgiveness for it. And and some of that is a discussion for another time. But man, let's not get so arrogant in it that we we spit on the cross, right? That we spit in the face of Jesus and say, well, your blood's going to cover it. So I'm going to just act how I want to. That's arrogance. That's not how God's people are to be. We're to, to be humbled right, at the fact that he is God and he stepped out of heaven to take our place. And I'm a filthy, wretched sinner who deserved to be on that cross. I deserved every stripe. I deserved every nail. I deserved every drop of blood that fell. But because of his love and his mercy, he took my place. But that doesn't breed arrogance. That breeds humbleness and humility. So the application for us today is, man, I just, I stop and think when I, and I know he's talking to Israel here. But man, could we apply that today? Is, is God fed up with our world? Man, you look at the sin that so many people have arrogantly just continued to, to have up front. And, and I'm not talking about the unsaved. I'm talking about the quote unquote saved. 
the ones that claim Christ. I mean, these are the the, the Jewish uh, people who were living like the pagans, living like those Gentile nations. That's what he had gotten so upset about, that they were doing everything just like everybody else. But man, I, I think, man, is he fed up with our world today or is he fed up with our nation today? I know so many say, you know, God bless America. And, and, and a lot of people hang their hat that know that God is not going to do anything to America. Well, I promise you that he can and that he will. And he will to this whole world if we don't repent, right? If we don't get our eyes right on him. Just go to the to, to the end of First Peter 4 as he talks about, man, he, it, it, the, the church, the body of Christ should be judged first, right? The, the judgment begins at home. And then what hope does the lost have? But I mean, that trickles on down to our state and our county and our community and our church and to us. Man, is God fed up with us? Is he fed up with your behavior today? Is he fed up with maybe how you acted over the weekend and up until Sunday? And then, you know, of course, you you watched or you came to drive in or, or whatever. And then you got religious all of a sudden. Is he fed up with the arrogance that we have? Don't don't be arrogant, but repent. I mean, that's all they needed to do. Yes, they got to the point we see in Ezekiel that they weren't going to listen anymore, but we'll find out tomorrow that there are still a few, right? There's still a remnant that are going to listen. So, man, why don't, let's not be arrogant today. Let's let's repent, turn from our evil ways, and let's humbly serve God today. God bless you all, and I have I hope and pray you have a great great day.